Hello friends, colleagues, students, C sharp learners. This is Dr. Satish Singhal, PhD, Professor of Computer Information Technology at Rose State College, Midwest City, near Oklahoma City, on, in Oklahoma. Today I want to show Windows form application with more than one form. And that's the reality of almost all industrially used Windows application. They don't have just one form, they have multiple forms. Now, there are a lot of YouTube videos available on that. If, in fact, if you just type on YouTube Windows form application with multiple forms, you'll get many videos. And one I watched was reasonably good, uh, although it does a form which is trivial. It doesn't really have to have two forms. So here I'll show a situation where more than one form is definitely needed. So first I'm going to show you a command line application and I don't have video on C sharp up to the point that I'm going to show you but hopefully we can do that in the future. Basically we have written two classes, an employee class which has the data, data members like first name, last name, hours worked, pay rate, salary and social security number. And then what we have done is we have done an employee list class where we create an array of employee type, we call that a list, and this will be something like if you have many employees in the company, you want to manage them, so you'll need a class like that. <coughs> and then of course we wrote a main method where we have a menu driven program but menu is controlled uh, by the command line application and it will be really nice if we can get all these menu items organized into a Windows form menu okay so I'll kind of run that here once with one menu item to give you a feel for how this kind of application will run in command line and then although I'm not going to show coding of 13 menu items here, but at least I'll show you one whose command line application I'm going to show. So let's run this program. And once again, uh, I will place the code for this, both of these classes. And actually, since I'm doing only a small portion of Windows form part of it, I will not have, it won't be necessary to put the code for that really, or maybe small portion of it, but uh, attached with this video, I'll put the code at my blog, which is uh, software, okay, pardon my fingers don't work so well, software engineer USA dot blogspot.com so you can get the code for empl employee and employee list class <coughs> and we don't need code for that because we're going to do windows application okay all right so let's run this program and it has main menu press relevant menu items and press enter key so one item here is add employee to employee list from the keyboard. So I'm going to type that one. And I have added some Windows form components in the command line. You can certainly do that. It doesn't make it a full-fledged Windows application, but it gives you some flavor of that, uh, which is always good. So let's say first name is Jimmy, last name is Jones. So this is your number, let's say 223344, work hours, let's say work 40 hours, pay rate, let's say $10 per hour, and it says add one, to add more employees, zero to stop, and I'm just going to add only one right now, put zero to stop, and I get my menu back, so I can print that, print employee list upon, so Employee list has only one employee right now, so I press 3, and looks like my entry was correct. 
Jimmy Jones, social security number, 40 hours work, $10 an hour, pays $400. Okay? So <clears throat> if you don't, if you're not going to use the application too much, you could really live by command line, but if it's going to be used often by many people, the Windows application is much better, but then I have to code all these menus in the menu strip in Windows form, which I'm going to show. And then some of the things like this one, like add employee to list from keyboard, you'll need an extra form, additional form to do that. Okay. And let's say you have, I guess I didn't show here, updating or deleting employee. Well, for that also you'll need forms. So let me get out of here and then see how we can do that. So first order of business would be to import this class, employee class, and employee list class into your Windows form application. And of course, the way I'm going to show you is really not a good way to do it. You should compile both classes as class libraries for DLL and then import those components actually into your Windows application. But since I don't have time to do that right now, I'm just going to import the raw source code for these classes. So <coughs> I'm going to create another Visual Studio application and run that. So and keep the other one open. So I say Visual Studio. Um, and it came up. So Let's choose that. So I want to create a Windows form application in which I'll import those other two classes. So file, new, project. And I have visual C++ here, but really I want C sharp. C sharp. This time I choose Windows form application. And that's fine. I'll leave the default. So this is employee processing GUI, graphical user interface. And I will get that now. Everything's slow when videos are being made. So all of you young people, just relax. Okay, not a good idea to have default name form one. So I'm going to go to the property sheet, uh, properties, change that to something decent. Let's say employee management system. Okay, we got that. Now, <coughs> I want to create a menu-driven application. So I go to my tools. Okay, tools I was looking at just a second ago. Well, let's choose right here. Okay, it doesn't matter. We go to view, toolbox. And in the toolbox, we're going to have uh, some items, let's say menus and toolbars. So I grab from here and drop that here. So here you'll have your first top level menu. And you can type additional menus sideways as well as sub menus. So here I'm just going to type uh, process employee or let's say add or modify employees. Okay, and uh, really in this menu bar, maybe I should increase the font so you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so let's see properties. Uh, okay, 
if I can find the font property I will do that it's unrehearsed videos are unrehearsed so they're gonna be a little slower than you might be used to okay so under this you could have those menu items that we were looking at in the command line application like add employees from the keyboard, add employees from the file, update employee, delete employee, and things like that. And I'm just going to show a couple of them. So let's say under this, I want to say add employees from the keyboard. And I think somehow I didn't get the properties of my menu. Oh, here it is. OK. Let's just change the property, font property here. So everybody has the larger font. employee from keyboard okay so that's the sub menu and of course I wouldn't know whether that got added correctly or not unless I am able to print so I'm gonna add one more item here in the sub menu so print data and under that, I'll say something very simple, print to text box. And text box is going to print to, so what happened? Yeah, it's there, okay. I'm going to just draw the text box right here. So let's get that. Under common controls, we'll have text box. So just drag and drop that. And I want to make it multi-line. <coughs> so now I can make it bigger and smaller like that. OK, so this is the one, when I execute this, a form that will collect the following things about employee should pop up. First name, hours work, last name, pay rate, salary, and social security number. The form should have one, two, three, four, five, six fields, six text boxes, and it should pop up. And once it pops up, the data should be collected and should be added to the employee list that we are working with. Okay, that's the idea. So let's go back. Now, you have a couple of things here. First is, this is our form one. If I go to Solution Explorer and view Solution Explorer, if I collapse all of these one by one like that, they will all line up here. Then this form that got added by default, .NET always calls it form one. Here's .cs, which will basically be .db. So let's get the code view. This is the graphical view. Let's go to the code behind. And if I click here, I'll go to the code behind. Well, one important thing is that if I'm managing an employee list, which will be something similar to this list or an instance of this class, well, that has to be available and visible in all forms. So first order business is that I take this form one class, which is derived from the form, and at the data level, I put instantiate my list first which can be accessed by other forms as well. That's one way to do it. There are other ways, but this is pretty simple. So I declare public static, and it's static so that I don't have to create another instance of the form one. Uh, so this will be public static, EAL, no, sorry, employee list. Okay, and 
uh, actually I don't have that yet so uh, I'm jumping ahead of myself so right now notice this is a new application so it doesn't really have an employee class an employee list class so first order business is to transfer those two classes here and as I said earlier best way to do that would be using a DLL but we are not doing that so let me first create a add a class so add new item I thought add class was there but it isn't that's fine and we call our class employee so same thing here and we got that now notice the namespace in the previous project and this would be different so I go to my previous project go to my employee class here have this right here and what I do is well copying and pasting become much easier if you collapse the definitions and I just not copy the name namespace because namespace will be different and using directives will have to be copied as well so first I copy my employee class only without namespace and go to my other project and paste that and then I go and just copy all the using directives and let's see yeah paste those and after that you have to make sure there are no red lines and this one does compile so I'm um, eyeballing it and I think well actually okay so I'm missing one adding one reference that is not here which is adding Microsoft Visual Basic I'm doing using but it, it didn't get added as a reference which did get added in the other one so I say add reference and Microsoft Visual Basic check that one and OK and now I have no red lines uh, I think I should be able to compile it right now control shift B and one succeeded OK so that transfer worked fine now the second one is I still have to add the employee list which was working they are working together so add new class and call it employee list and once again you're going to copy and paste minus the namespace so I go to my employee list easiest way to copy is collapse definitions and just hold on a second did I do it right yeah that's right now it's right just copy the class not the namespace because namespace and new project is different okay so and then all the using directives okay and I ball again that no red lines okay and I'll compile again to make sure that too. Build succeeded. So one more time it's perfect. So that's how our transfer took place from the classes that were in command line to the Windows form. So now I can go back to my form1.cs and I was trying to do this earlier. Wouldn't have worked. It will now equal to new my spelling is wrong obviously casing is wrong new employee list 
So when form is loaded, this will get created automatically. We will have a EAL, which all forms can use, although name will be class qualified form one dot EAL, and we'll show you use of that. Okay, so that's now we are ready to add extra form that could be used for data collection. So I go back to my design view and notice when this should be clicked, I should get a form that will allow me to input data for first name, last name, social security number, hours worked, and the pay rate. Salary is automatically com computed, don't, don't have to worry about that. Okay, so basically you should do a design of the form on paper first before you do anything with it. But now we need an extra form, so I just say right click, add Windows form, and I'm gonna give it a better name than form two, which is a bad name really, doesn't mean anything. So I'll just say add employee from And this form will pop up for you to design also. So form popped up right there. We take the default name, not a good name of course. So I'm gonna go to the property sheet and change the name. So name should really be okay. employee data form. Okay, so in this one we need the labels and text boxes for data input. So, okay, so let's see uh, my toolbox. So I need one label and one text box and I'm just gonna make copies of those and change the names as I need to change them. Name property. So label, let's fix that first. Labels name don't doesn't need to be changed, all the text has to be. So let's say we are getting the first name first. First name. And you know what? To shorten the time of this video, I'm just gonna get this from another application that I've already done and copy and paste that, or I will do one of it and pause the video and, okay, well, let, let's go ahead and do it. So font size should be a little bit bigger. Okay, 11 bold. And then I need a text box, which will store the first name when user types it. So, text box, single line is good enough. One thing I don't have time to show, you should have upper limit of number of characters in each text box, so maybe we should set that right now, text align. Max length should not be this, max length should be maybe 30 characters at the most, okay? So that they don't keep typing infinitely. That would be a bad programming, okay? Okay, so name of this I want to change to txt first. That's more under easier to understand name. And then I'm gonna need these for last name. So let's do that. Social security number, do that. Hours and pay rate. One, two, 
three, four, five. Yeah, salary is automatically calculated. You don't need that. So let's just change each one of these. So text property should be last name. But name of this should be better than text box two or one. TXT last. And here I'm asking for the social security number. Pardon me if I use a abbreviation social number because don't have enough room and this will be txt ssn and this will be hours so hours worked and this will be txt hours and this will be txt rate or pay rate okay and then data would be collected by a button so we need a button that when button is cl clicked the data are collected process data and its text property has to be changed and for better visibility the font can be changed also, so let's make it bold 10. And then, if I'm going to add more than one employee, I'll need a form to clear up, button to clear up all these fields. So I can create second button, which will reset all these to blank. And that will be reset. And let's name it different than, than BTN button one. And we'll name it BTN reset. OK, so we're ready with this form. So even without worrying about how this will be displayed with the main form, first we not, need to make sure that all the data are collected properly and added to the list. So we double click here to open the code window for this. And here we know we have five <coughs> fields. We just collect data for those. So I'll do a string first, which is the first name is txt first dot text dot trim I emphasize trim use of trim all the time because user may have typed some leading or lagging white spaces which will corrupt your data and trim gets rid of those seems like a lot of labor but it's worth it then string last txt last
dot text dot trim. We got those two. Then we need social security number, which is also a string. SSN is txt SSN dot text dot trim. And then we need to parse ours to double type. And my rule in .NET is .NET has an excellent data type for money. Anytime we deal with money, we should only and only and only use decimal type. None of these Java double type being forced into .NET system. So I have double HRS is the hours worked is double dot parse. And then we have txt uh, okay. hours is hours dot text dot trim. And lastly but not the least, decimal rate is decimal dot parse. txt rate dot text dot trim. Okay, I got all my data. I have in the form one my employee list class to which I'm supposed to build an employee from here and add to that. So let's do that. So first we build an employee. EMP is new employee and we have two constructors use the explicit one so first is first then last ah. then HRS for hours then rate for the rate and SSN for the social security number. So we got our employee built and now here's the important part which if you're not careful you can have trouble with that. We had not here sorry declared an EAL static type right now it's blank. We want to add employee to this because that's the one will be using in the main form. So full access to this is only available if we say form one dot EAL. So in order to add to this class, this instance will say form one dot EAL <coughs> dot add employee method pass the EMP. Okay? That's what has to be done. And then this form will, you can just use it as many times as you want. Each time a new employee will be added to the list. Okay? Now the question is, how do we know this works? Well, uh, in my, good way to confirm that would be print something to command line. So, one way to do that is you can take your Windows application and go to Project Properties and change the type to also to console application. That doesn't mean that your Windows application has disappeared. That simply means you could do, for debugging purpose, you can really print something to the console as well. So we can just test this form by itself because I can do something like this that uh, console dot right line uh, 
form one dot BAL. So when I add an employee and since I'm printing the console, whatever I added, if addi addition was done correctly, it'll show up on the console. Okay. Now the other thing is, how do we show up this in the main form? Because unless we show up in the main form, we can't use it. Uh, so way to do that would be, we go to back to our form one design, and I want that form to show up when I click here. So let's open the code window for this submenu. Double click. Should have worked. Maybe it's already there. So let's see. No, it's not there. Okay, so somehow it was designed view. It should have been there, but if not, I can just create it, really. Yeah, this may have, this may be an artifact of, like, I'm recording this video. But I think, uh, let's see. Let me see the style. I'll just type it by hand because if because of recording, I'm not able to do it. Okay. Yeah, it's only doing it. Okay. So let's do one more. Uh, view code. Okay. The view code didn't give me that either. So I'll have to look up in some previous. Yeah, because of this video, it's not, double click is not working to open the uh, code window, create the code window. It did for the form load, but it doesn't do it for the menu. And that's a, that's a problem, but I'll try to overcome it one way or the other way. Okay, so, uh, let's see, document online, properties. I do view code, I get only that. Okay. Yeah, and then it reversed that. I'm going to pause this video and type it by hand and come back. Okay, I got it. Actually, when I paused the video and double clicked on that, it worked. Sorry, I can't show that action because. Windows Media Encoder is not the best recording tool, but that's all I have. So basically this code should get executed when this will be clicked. Okay. So here first order of business is that my form that I had, where you go, Solution Explorer. Well, this form should show up. And the way to show that form is as follows. I create an instance of that form. So I'll say form f is new. Uh, and the name of that form, which is add employee from keyboard form. So since this is form type, this is perfectly okay. Some people put this name here, but that this doesn't really matter. Now, if you want to see that, you can go to this class and see that this is actually the class name. So we are really instantiating this class. Okay, that's the logic behind. And of course, it's form type, so we can have form f on the front. And then I say f dot show dialog. OK. So now we're ready to test it and see if this menu works. When I click on that menu, uh, 
uh, I should be able to see the form when I print the data, add the data, record it. It should, at least for now, it should show up on the console. Okay, and later on we can do the print into the text box in the main form. Okay, so let's compile it. One succeeded. Thank God. Control F5 to run it. And if I click here, my form showed up. And you know what? I'm going to close it and move this whole thing so that you can see the console here and the data being printed here. Let's do it again and move this one also. So let's say first name was Sam, last name was Jones. Social security number 223344. Hours works, let's say 10. Oh, sorry, 40. And here it is 10. And as a record data, and notice that data is being added perfectly. Reset I've not coded yet, so I'll just remove those. for another employee, so let's say Tim Doe, social five five, oops, sorry, social five five six six, forty five, here it twenty, and this time if I record data, I should get both of them, because now it has two members, and see? I got the same Jones and Tim Doe both. All right. So it looks like my form is working because I've confirmed from the command line uh, printing to the console. And remove that. So now let's uh, do a bit more. And that will be the last step, really. So let's say I want to print to text box. And I have to create a code window for this. And once again, it's not going to work if I double click unless I pause the video. So I'm going to pause the video again. OK, I'm back. So here, if I click on that other menu item, uh, this one, it should print the data to the text box. So let's do that. So our text box name, I think I forgot it was was something well text box one is not a good name so I'll say txt display so go to my code behind not here but here and I say txt display dot text is equal to eal Oh, no, sorry, append text, append text. Oh, no, uh, text box name, dot append text. Pass it with EAL dot to string. Okay. So now it will print to the text box, not a problem. Okay. All right, now I think I'm ready to show at least a fairly major component of doing multiple forms in a Windows application. So let's compile it and run it. And you can see, of course, here also, but so my form shows up. Actually, I want to sh make sure that you are able to see. OK, let's click out of it again. So I want to put my form here. And I can see the console as well as, sorry, my data form. So and, uh, sorry, I didn't put the scroll bars, but that's OK. You can do that yourself. So first employee I'm adding is Sam Jones. Social is two two three three four four. 
hours work is let's say 35 uh, pay rate is 10 I'm recording it and that shows up here still haven't done the reset probably won't do it in this video but I can just change the value that I need to change and let's say Tim do social is let's say 998866 works harder than Sam does 45 you get more money 20 and I record data and now I'm seeing both of them let's see if we see them here in the text box so I'm done so I close my form and print the text box and I got them here as well okay so hopefully I've showed you enough of how to create multiple forms in a Windows application and procedure same if you want to add more forms uh, there's no difference in the procedure and it works exactly the same way so uh, thank you for watching this was Windows form application with more than one form C sharp version Dr. Satish Singhal PhD professor of computer information technology at Rose State College Midwest City Oklahoma and this is my blog where code for employee class and employee list class will be posted I suppose I could put post the code for the two forms we did although that's kind of less important really because you're not gonna learn much from watching that code rather you learn a lot more from doing it actually thank you see you in future